Hi guys and welcome to the next video from our multiplayer game development session. Congratulations, you make it so far. We almost have a complete rock, paper, scissors game. The only thing that we're missing is a game over mechanic. So we don't know how to tell who is the winner. And uh, in this video, I don't want to rush straight away and start writing code. Let me explain why, right? So let's think about what will be the easiest, the simplest from the perspective of just writing code, brain dead code to check who is the winner of rock, paper, scissors. So let's make a function called get game result. So how would this function look like? The basic, the simplest way that you can think about it, well, you need to test what was the player one turn. So you can say switch, this turns zero and there are three cases, right? So there is case of rock, then there is a case of paper, and then there is a case of scissors. Now for each of those cases, you need to also to test what was the decision of player two. So for rock, it's not enough to know that player one selected rock. You also need to know what the second player has selected. So for rock, you make another switch saying, okay, so what was the second player's decision? Was it rock, was it paper, and or was it scissors? And in each of these blocks, you will write return. So if it is rock and rock, you will return minus one. That means draw. If it is rock and paper, then player one. So you'll return here something like zero, etc. But writing this code is kind of a bulky. So you can imagine if I even write it in a very compact way, it will take at least like 12 or 15 lines of code. The question is, can we do better instead of writing this little game logic in a switch case? Can we think about the nice way to calculate the outcome of the game without writing the huge switch block that is very error prone and very easy to make a mistake here. If you try to draw this game uh, on the paper, this is the model that you may receive. So rock bit scissors, scissors bit paper, and paper again bits rock. And the arrow here defines what bits what, right? And if you look at it and try to analyze it, it will soon turn out that the outcome of the game does not really depend on the exact choices of the player, but rather it depends on the distance between those choices. So let me explain a little bit. Let's say that P1 is the choice of the player 1, P2 is the choice of the player 2. Now my claim is if, if the distance between P1 to P2 is 1, that means that player 1 wins. If this distance is two, that means that player two wins. And if distance is zero, that means that it is a draw. So let's check it really quickly. Let's say player one selects rock and player two selects scissors. Now, what is the distance? The distance will be the amount of arrows that you need to jump to get from the first figure to the second figure. And you can only jump in the direction of the arrow, so no jumping backwards. So the distance between P1 and P2 is gonna be just this arrow, so the distance is gonna be one. And of course, rock bits scissors. And it is easy to see, so whenever the distance is one in this or in this arrow, this will hold true because the figures, they are set in the way that each figure bits the next figure. What is a diff distance two? Distance two means that player two will win. So if player one selects rock, what will be the distance two from the rock? From the rock, the distance two is gonna be one, two, it's gonna be paper. So paper bits rock. And obviously distance zero means that they have chosen the same value, so it is a draw. So now the biggest question will be how to write the formula, how to calculate the distance in the code. And it turns out this is quite simple. And remember that order matters. So distance from rock to scissors are not the same as distance from scissors to rock. So from rock to scissors is gonna be one, and from scissors to rock it's gonna be one and two. Let's try to calculate the distance. So the basic formula that you can use is just say the distance is P2 minus P1 which will work in most of the cases. Let's say rock will have the index of zero, scissors will have the index of one, and paper will have the index of two. We need to give them some sort of a numbers to work with them in the mathematical world, not in a graphical world, right? This formula will work fine most of the time. Let's say if player two selects paper, and paper is two, and player one selects scissors, uh, scissors is one, two minus one gonna be one, that will mean that a player one wins. This is all nice, however, there is a case when you might get a negative distance with uh, this kind of a case. So let's say player two selects rock, 
and rock is zero and player one selects paper and paper is two so zero minus two gonna be minus two which is nothing to do with our uh, formula that we have just put together there's no such thing as a negative distance should not be at least so what is the way to deal with it the easiest way would be to alter our formula a little bit so here's our formula and what if we add to the distance the value that is the same as the length of the circle so here we have three arrows so let's add three to the distance and in order to make sure that we don't have the big distances like four and five we need to remember that we are working in the circle so walking one arrow will be exactly the same as walking four arrows because you will just make a full circle and return back to the same place or walking seven arrows so the distances will be the same if you just take the remainder of this value of the distance plus three to make sure it's not negative modulo 3 modulo is the remainder of a division of a value for 3 and this will be our formula so if you use this formula for every values of the player 1 and player 2 choices you will get the distance between 0 to 2 and based on those distances you will be able to tell who won again 0 means draw 1 means player 1 won and 2 means player 2 one so why don't we go back to code and try to implement this formula in practice all right let's now get back to our server side code and implement this simple logic into the code okay so the first thing that we will need to do we will need to somehow transform from the turns into the numbers because in the example that i just showed you we use the numbers so to do that we'll add a new function decode turn and uh, it will accept the turn at the string and it will return the number. So in case if the turn is rock, then we will return zero. The next figure is scissors, because remember rock beats scissors. So scissors get indexed one, finally paper get, gets index of two. Now here, just to play safe, if you want to save yourself some time of debugging, make sure you have this default case. And in default case, just throw new error and write here some nice message, could not decode turn and put here what exactly could, could not decode. It might not be a deal breaker for this little application, but in the long run, if you will debug a bigger application, it's always just nice to put the safety net here so that in the console, in the error message, you will see what exactly went wrong and you will not let your bug slip too far away. So for example, if you do a refactoring somewhere and you miss the letter in the word scissors or write it with single S instead of two S's, it's, it will be really hard to debug it without this little uh, default blocks that are throwing the error straight away. Now we can use this decode turn function to get the numbers from the turn of player zero. This will be decode turn from this turns of player zero and same gonna be for player one. All right, now finally we can get the distance and this is gonna be the turn of player one minus the turn of player two plus, sorry, player zero, player one minus player zero, sorry for getting the formula, and plus three modulo three, so remainder of a division by three. Now this is a distance, now depending on this distance, if it is zero, it's a draw. If it is one, then the first player, player zero one. If it is two, then it's second player who won. All right, now let's write another switch block and uh, well, implement that logic. What is the distance? Now, if it is zero, we will here write something like it is draw. For one, the first player won. For two, second player won. 
Okay, so now let's just send some sort of a nice message to the players to tell what is the game result. So for the draw, we will call send to players. We'll send them the message draw. For the winner and loser, we need to send the similar messages, right? But just replace the winner and, and loser, who is the winner and who is the loser. And to do that, I'll just do another function so that you don't have to duplicate the code. So send win message. We'll accept winner and loser. Winner will receive a message. U1 and loser will receive a message you lost. All right, now, in case if distance between the turns is one, that means that player one is the winner. Send win message and Players zero is the winner. The second one is, well, obviously a loser, but luck for him. In case if distance is two, then it's the opposite way. So as you see, this logic is really, really simple and it's much easier than writing like 25 uh, switch blocks and case blocks to determine who's winner, who's loser. So the code looks all right. I don't know if it will work yet, but I will soon test it. Uh, let's put it into the right place and don't forget to put it before we put nulls into the turn because otherwise this will not work. Get game result and this should print the result of the game to the players, right? Then we reset the turns and then we say next round. All right, now let's see how that will work in practice. Let's open our game clients. Okay, both clients are ready. Uh, the guy on the left selects rock, the guy on the right selects rock as well. Uh, game over, rock, rock and draw, which is great. This is exactly what I expected. Both rocks are giving draw. Next round. So in the next round, um, let's say the player on the left, left selects rock and the player on the right selects scissors. So now on the next round, the one who selected rock is a winner and well, the other one is the loser. This guy already selected scissors once again, and let's say this guy now selects paper just to play fair. He is lost and this guy won. So now we got the game mechanics in place and players know when they won or lost. So now here's a tiny assignment for you because you know, practice makes perfect. Unless you try to modify parts of this code and write something on your own, you will not really understand the mechanics and you will not make those errors that you need to make in order to learn because learning is a process of making errors and making mistakes and then uh, fixing them. So try to implement the logic of the scores, right? So. Uh, player one is now earned five points, player two now earned six points. So make some sort of a score to appear somewhere on the game. If you want an additional task, try to think how you would put the score somewhere on the board, just not to print it in the game log, but to put it somewhere on the interface. So you have five, uh, your opponent has six, etc. So that was a great progress and quite a long video, so you ask me. Uh, so in the next video, we will finish with this little project with rock, paper, scissor project and we will move on to the even more interesting multiplayer game. So this was the simplest one and congratulations you already built a core game mechanics. That's a good job and I hope really hope to see you guys in the next video when we will be doing even more interesting things. See ya and bye.